Welcome back everybody. It is time to get some finish work done on the bathroom. So um, we've got a baseboard to do. We've got the trim piece uh, in front of the walk-in shower to get done. Um, and a uh, quarter round around the um, uh, vanity. So on the, on the base of the vanity there. So um, I'm working on the um, trim in front of the shower. So let's jump in there. I can show you kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to give it a shot, so let's jump in. So my ultimate thought is to piece, use a piece of Schluter trimming that I did on the edging of the tile. The reason why I don't want to do a piece of quarter on it is because I think it's just too bulky. Um, not that it wouldn't look nice, I just think that it would look better with something very minimal right in front of that shower stall. Uh, the other problem is, is that I'm going to end up having to put a bead of caulk uh, silicone across the top of it and across the bottom of it because I don't want water having an easy access to get to the subfloor. Um, that's always a problem, water damage. So my thought is that I take this and I basically just trim down this enough to go into it. I could still put a piece of, uh, a bead of caulk across it, but it'd be very minimal and it wouldn't really make it stand out especially when you're going to have trim on either side of it that's going to be white. This would just be a very obscure piece. I don't know if it's going to look good. I'm thinking it will because it will be focused more on the tile, I hope, versus on the flooring. But that's what I'm going to try to attempt to do is, is just knock this down just enough so that way it'll sit in there. I could run caulk across it. And, and basically have it set and ready to go. Um, so that's what I have to work on first. I don't want to do any of the trim work on the sides of it until this is done. That way if I had to notch a piece of the trim to go over the top of it, that way it, it it's, looks like it's supposed to be there. I have one set of trim that's going to go this direction that's going to run right about into here. And then I have another uh, baseboard that's going to run this direction. So wherever this ends up here will determine whether or not I have to notch here and I know I'll have to notch in the corner just to get it to set. Okay, I've got it installed right there. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and let it, let it lay over and then caulk it in. I think it's going to do just fine. It comes right on the edge right there. I have a little bit of about a less than a sixteenth of a gap against the wall. So I think that's going to come out fine. Let's look at it from a distance. I think that's pretty obscure. I mean, I can see it from here, but I mean, unless you get up there and go, what is that? Then you really don't know what it is. So I think that'll blend just fine, especially against that tile and shouldn't have a problem. So I'm going to go with it for right now. I mean, the worst thing that could possibly happen is that I just have to take it out at some point and redo it and put a piece of cord around it. But I'd rather give that a shot than not. I mean, that's clean. That's against the edge. Let's call it good. All right, so I've got to do trim right here on this wall, which is what I have here. Except this is going to be about a three inch or three and a half inch board. So it has a nice rounded edge. The nice thing that I like about this one here versus, say, the nice thing that I like about this one versus like a more fancy one is the dust is going to sit and just fall off the baseboard. You get fancy baseboards that have a lot of uh, base, a lot of thickness here, or they have a lot of design in them. More dust fills up, more work. This is less work. You just wipe the top off of it and you're done and you move on. So, I need to drop it right in here. And I know right here at my tile spot spot right here is 47 and a quarter but the problem that i have is that's my end how does that look that doesn't look too pretty so what i have to do is i have to do a return on the baseboard all right, so basically what you have is you have your miter saw. You're trying to make an in return or an end down, depending on how you want to lay it out. So the basics of this is that you're going to want to take your trim board 
and you're going to want to do a inward, what I call an inward 45, or excuse me, an outward 45, so where it comes down and it goes through. Once you have that, you're going to have to have a piece of scrap kind of like this, and you'll what you'll do is you'll take that over and then do an outward 45 that way. So I'll show you on the big piece, but I'm just kind of showing you here. Once you have your 45 going this direction and your 45 going this direction, you'll flip this over, and basically what I'll end up doing is cutting it on a zero. Cutting on a zero on the very edge of where the meat is showing, where the uh, finger joint pine, which is what that is, and the primer is setting, and then cutting it. And what you end up getting out of it is something that looks a bit like this, which creates a end return. There's another way to do it too. This is just a very clean and simple way to do it. There's another direction to do it, to be able to do it falling into the ground so it looks like it end caps with this on the edge. I can show you that as well at the end of it so you can kind of see it, but for right now I've got to build this into my piece that I'm cutting for the other. So now that looks tons better than just having a cut off rough edge board. So, uh, screw holes completely covered up by the trim. some trim that matches the old style a little bit the old teardrop it's uh, 326 327 um, the casing around the window is 357 colonial and I just want to kind of match it because the house the rest of the house is like that and the last thing I want to do is have to change all of it around those door cases so hopefully we can get lucky and we're gonna find it now. This is actually gonna be, this will actually be um, a little bit thicker than what was on there, which isn't a big deal. It had a, a, a smaller width profile, so, um, but it is what it is. So we will do with what we got. So I will tell you right now, this is, this is MDF board which is medium density fiberboard. Stay away from it. I don't like MDF. I don't think it's worth the beans to make it, uh, but we've done it because it makes life easy for certain people to do their trim. Um, I am gonna go to a finger joint, prime finger joint, uh, which means what they've done with this board is that they've come up a certain way and jointed it here, come up, and jointed it here and jointed it and so forth and so on so that's kind of what i'm going to be using um so three sticks of those and we're good to go
More work. I've got to try and finish my bathroom out. I said I'm trying to finish my bathroom out. I forgot to buy casing the other day because I need it around the door before I can do the rest of my trip. So. No. <laughs> Not in this market. We're all like going, where would we go? Yeah, that's yeah. where. <laughs> That's where I was at last year, like, there's nothing to buy, so. Yeah. So, somebody told me yesterday, had a cut. Have a good night. If you have spots that you need to fill, this is what you need to use. This stuff works amazingly well. coping that I, I'm going to be doing you've got to do what they call an open bevel cut which this right here is an open bevel cut because you can see the wood grain on it if it was closed it would be going the other direction where you wouldn't see it so I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about so what we want is an open bevel cut of 45 out of it and that way this way when we do it what we're trying to do is get to the very get to the very edge of that white line right there is what we're trying to do so normally you would take a coping saw and cut into it to get there i don't have the saw blade for the coping saw we're going to do this a little bit differently and you're all going to go what in the world so just bear with me don't worry we're not going to set anybody on fire yet. Might set my cameraman on fire. Matabo. Matabo, please, if you would, expand your line at Lowe's so I can buy more of your tools. Ready? coped it with a grinder. Now obviously it's a little rough. You can actually take a piece of sanding paper, sand that out, and lay it on there and it'll come out just perfect for you. So that's what I'm going to be using on, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing to uh, actually do on one of my uh, corners. I actually did it on another corner. So there you have it. That's one tip that you can take away. So, I actually did not come up with this idea on my own. Like every great person, they kind of steal parts and pieces from other people. Borrow parts and pieces from other people. 
So I got the idea from Finnish Carpentry TV. I'll put a link at the top right here. And that way you can click on it. Don't go anywhere yet. Wait till you finish the entire video. Then you can go back and then you can click and go to go to the Finnish Carpentry TV. Uh, I believe his name is Richard. He doesn't really ever say his name on the videos or anything like that. But I believe his name is Richard. Uh, I watch him quite a bit. He is like the Jedi Master of Finnish Carpentry. Uh, go over there and take a look. He's awesome what he does. He explains it out really well. So he actually used the grinder on MF, MFD, MDF. Like I said when I went to part of the video at Lowe's. Um, yeah, don't buy MDF if you don't have to. It's crap. Um, plus it's not good to breathe in when you're sawing it. Especially a lot of it because it has formaldehyde in it. So you should have a respirator on and glasses or something that covers your eyes as well when you're doing it. Wood's probably not the best thing either to be soaking into your lungs, but I'm old. I can deal with it by now. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this trimmed out so that way we can get it on and last piece to fit. I'm not Catholic, but I hear it works. All right, so I got the last piece in. I've got it fitted all the way around. I really like it. Now this is loose, just so you understand. I haven't nailed this in yet. So I've got everything fitted except for around the counter right here. And I'm going to actually wait on fitting that for just a little bit because I've got to sand these spots where I put the plastic wood putty or wood fill into it. Uh, i got to get it sanded and repaint that really quick. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, but I'm probably going to fit it before uh, I do that. So that way when it's done I can just get it tacked in and ready to go. So, so basically you have two ways that you can roll this quarter round up. You can roll it up so it lays out a little bit flatter if you had a little bit of a gap or you had an issue on the side or if you really want that profile. You could turn it around and you could set it up tight so it's very skinny so it's not noticeable or not in the way. I'm actually going to cut it this way because I really want it to be tight against the vanity. I don't want it sticking out even though that I'm not going to be standing on it or standing by it. I just want it to blend in and be as notice, not as noticeable as possible without having something like this hanging out there without it hanging out there a long ways. Now I do like this way and I did one of my, er, my bathrooms with it running this direction but I do want it nice and tight so when you go to the miter saw you've got to remember which way you're going to cut it and which way you're not going to cut it. So we'll just, I'll go over that with you at the miter saw. So when I'm doing it, I want to do the 45 a closed end, but I want to make sure that I'm going the right way. Or this is going to, this is the nice tight fit here where it's up against it. Or this is going to be so it kind of lays out a little bit and it's what I call lazy, but it's not. I mean, that's a lazy look versus something that's nice and tight. So again, we're going to be cutting it this direction, nice and tight. I want to close 45 on it. That way I can make sure that I get my gapping on there. All right, so, all right, so this is the moment of truth. If I even remotely got this thing close, on bevel oh my goodness oh my goodness that is beautiful that is a beautiful corner I like that corner wow so the trim is done for around the cabinet all I need to do is resand it a couple spots repaint it and um, paint all the trim hang it and the trim is done Okay, so I did tell you that uh, at the end of this that I would show you how they did that uh, um, return on the um, trim a little bit more in detail. So that's what we're going to do really quick before we end the video is just showing you how I did that and also showing you another way to do an end return as well. That way you can uh, try this on your own on your own projects or what have you. Uh, again, um, there is a link back to the original one where I talked about Finnish Carpentry TV. I will put the link in the description as well, just so you can go to them.
he's just phenomenal. I mean, hey, I, I'm not going to lie where I find it and uh, adapt my stuff to, like we all do. Uh, he's he's amazing. So go over there, take a look. He's got a lot of good stuff to be able to see from uh, as far as doing baseboard trim, uh, finish trim around uh, crown moldings and stuff like that. So let's jump into this really quick just so you can see how to do this. Okay, let's do this really quick. Grab a piece of scrap, whatever you're using. And what we want to do is make a close in 45 on one on the front side. Roll, roll it over to the other 45 on the other side. Make another close in cut. Zero out the miter saw. And what we're trying to do is just take the very edge of this. So lay it down, find that very edge, voila, or voila, voila, voila. There you go, close in. It returned to the end. Okay, so another option that you can do with this is taking basically the same thing and what you'll do is you'll turn your baseboard upside down and roll it to a 45 and then just cut your angle out. Waste. Slide this one over, pull it over to a 45. Waste, turn it upside down, go to zero. You want it right on the edge of that line is where you want it. And when you have it and you have your piece ready, It'll come around and do something like that right there for you. So that's the two options that you can do for a uh, return on. So that's your two options you can do on a return for baseboard. Uh, I'm sure there's hundreds of more. That's just the ones that I know that I like using. Um, I've used this one. I've used the last one. I used the last one on one bathroom and the one that I did that I showed you the first one that's the one that I did on this bathroom so I've had both of them in play I actually like the first one better I think it's a lot cleaner um, this one's really a lot cleaner but it's a little bit more time consuming to kind of get everything uh, filled ground down and stuff like that so um, but uh, run with it and uh, and see what you think and uh, hey you know what it, it, all you can do is just waste wood how are you going to get that to attach? I'm glad you asked. All right, so the question is, is how am I going to glue the end of this down with the piece that I have here in order to make that work? Well, the answer is CTE glue. So this isn't anything more than what you could buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards or True Value in like a Gorilla Glue form or a... Um, um, liquid, not liquid nails, um, anyway, uh, that, the only difference is it comes with an uh, applicator that you spray on the wood and it makes it bond a lot quicker. So let me just show you how it works. Of course, with the price of wood right now, you probably don't want to do that. But hey, six and a half, one to a dozen. What do you What do you want? So, so um, that's all I've got on that. Hopefully, that was something that you could definitely use uh, and uh, and uh, work with and uh, do your own projects with. So that is everything that I have for this video. I appreciate you all watching. It means a lot to me. I really hopeful. Uh, I really hope that you were able to take some of the stuff away and that you could use it and that's part of the reason why I do these videos is for you guys to be able to use some of the information that I am using on your own project. So uh, with that said, with that said, again I appreciate you watching. I'll keep posting, you keep watching, 
and hopefully we can build something big here. So uh, until next time, y'all have a good day.